I'm going to hand you over to Nev, and uh, and then we can take some further questions. Thank you very much, uh, Prime Minister, and thanks everyone. Uh, as the Prime Minister mentioned, uh, I've stepped up to this role when he asked me to do it because I think Australia, right now, more than anything, needs to focus on minimising and mitigating the impact of the coronavirus on our businesses, on our communities, on our people. And that's through the preservation of jobs as much as we possibly can, given the constraints that we have around the restrictions from the coronavirus. So my role is going to be looking for those problems and looking for opportunities where we can join businesses together to solve two problems, where there is a workforce that is no longer uh, gainfully employed and where there's a workforce that is needed, where there's equipment that can be redeployed, where we need to intervene to protect our critical supply chains and our utilities and also, very importantly, looking to the future because we know that this virus will come and go and we want to be well positioned to make sure that we restore people's jobs and livelihood as quickly as we possibly can afterwards. So our priority is to identify those areas, um, ask people for their help and look for coordination across all of those areas to, to minimise the impact of this virus. Thank you, Nev. Um, just before we come to that, also there's some important information I wanted to relay on testing. Um, my morning brief this morning has Australia at 162,747 tests uh, for COVID-19. Now, to put this in perspective, the test by 100,000 population for Australia is five times, almost five times, 4.7 in fact, what it is in the United Kingdom. It is 25 times what it is in the United States. It is even higher now than in the Republic of Korea and puts Australia right at the top of that leaders board in terms of the amount of testing that we're undertaking in Australia. This is a very important statistic uh, because it shows that uh, those testing resources we are, we are securing and we are continuing to deploy, the testing and the contact tracing is the most important jobs we have as governments to ensure uh, that we can best manage uh, this virus and to supported by all the other measures, ensure we can uh, uh, reduce uh, the, the peak impacts uh, that we are so uh, determined to do in managing the virus in the community. Andrew. Minister, you um, keep using the word scalable to talk about economic measures. Surely now you can see the scale of the economic and societal problem from the lines outside Centrelink. Will you consider a scheme like Boris Johnson's where he provides money to distressed businesses so they can keep their workers on the bridge until we get to the other side? Well, two things. We are already providing money to businesses um, through the BAS arrangements. And one of the weaknesses of the system that you're advocating for is that it has to build an entirely new payment system for that to be achieved, which is never done quickly and is never done well and that would put at great risk the sort of resources we're trying to get to people. The best way to get help to people is through the existing payment channels, through the existing tax system arrangements. That was the lesson from the GFC. Of all the money that went out in the GFC, and I'm not making a partisan point here, the key lesson was you must use existing channels for getting money to people because that is the most effective way for that to occur. To dream up other schemes can be very dangerous. Even if it means more job losses, No, that's well, I don't accept that at all. And that is not the advice of Treasury either. That is completely inconsistent with the advice of Treasury. See, what we're doing is keeping as many businesses as we possibly can open. And then what we're doing for those businesses that close, because of the many measures, in fact, that we're putting in place, we are ensuring a stronger safety net for all of those who are impacted by that. Businesses will close because of the restrictions we have put in place. There will be no jobs in those businesses. And so what we want to ensure is that the Australians who are affected by that, and the businesses indeed that are affected by that, that they can get a lifeline and a safety net that will help them through. Because if you lose your job and you earn 150000 or if you lose your job and you earn 50000 or your job is at risk on those two different levels, then I'm ensuring that both of those people get the same support. Will you waive mutual obligations? I think this isn't a one-on-one -on -one interview, Andrew. Will you waive mutual obligations? PM, can you... I addressed that last night. Uh, 
Communications, logistics, transport will all be important. The Department of Defence does that very well. So what role do you envisage for the Department of Defence? Well, they're already playing a role. Uh, they're already involved, particularly in logistics issues and the repurposing of supply chains on, on PPE masks and things of that nature. And I, I want to uh, commend uh, Minister Andrews, Karen Andrews, for the amazing job she's been doing around that effort, working together with the Minister for Defence. Uh, Defence personnel are already involved in contract tracing and surging workforce support into state governments to help them with those tasks. Um, logistics support from the military will also be available and the many other tasks that they can be involved in, which were on great display during the bushfire crisis. And all of those uh, resources will be at the disposal of the National Coordination Commission for Coronavirus, and uh, they will be plugging in heavily with this work uh, with, with NEV. Prime Minister, Prime Minister, Prime Minister. In your opening remarks last night and again today that the situation is slightly different in some of the states. Is, is it conceivable that New, New South Wales and Victoria could move ahead to further restrictions at a faster pace than other states? Well, the, the preference of all states and territories is to ensure as much consistency as possible, uh, because it is absolutely true that the situation in New South Wales is different to that in Victoria and to that of Western Australia, and in particular the Northern Territory and Tasmania. And where possible, uh, they are seeking to ensure a consistent approach. Uh, but the issue of he hitting higher thresholds and other measures is a matter that is being um, discussed by the National Cabinet. Uh, but be assured that if additional measures are required for different parts of the country, uh, that there would be no resistance uh, to that occurring. Um, what it would be hard, I think, for some Australians to um, get their heads around is why a particular measure might be introduced in Melbourne, but not in Adelaide. And that could cause some confusion for people living in Adelaide. Um, it could also mean that um, if some states were to go ahead and other states were forced to follow, then that could cause needless economic loss in those states as well. See, we're managing two crises, an economic one and a health one, and they are impacting on our country in different ways across the country. Yeah. Last night you told Australians to stay home except for essential school work, grocery shopping, health or exercise. This morning the government texted people who are sick to stay home. Well, obviously it's ur more urgent that sick people get that message. Don't you think that lack of detail this morning undermines the very clear advice you gave last night? No, no it doesn't because it was consistent with the advice. The most urgent message that we're getting for people to stay home is to stay home if you're sick. That is the most important, urgent message. It is also important that people should stay home when they're in self-isolation. And as I said last night, our preference and our instruction is more generally, stay home unless you're going out for essential. But the most dangerous thing you can do, and we know of people who are sick and have sought to go to pharmacies, and that is very dangerous. And so the most important part of the message that we're seeking to get out is that message. There will be more messages. I mean, just last night, you were criticising the government for not having a text messaging service. And here it is first thing this morning, and I knew that was taking place. So I'd ask the media to be patient. We're obviously getting to these issues, and I appreciate there'll be criticism from time to time. But that message is very clear. The message we gave last night was very clear. There will be more messages that come out uh, using those sort of mechanisms, and we are further upgrading that capability. Who are a little bit confused. Parents, do I send my kid to school? Do I not? Some small businesses who don't fall very specifically into some of those categories. Would, categories? The categories in terms of I should close. So maybe right. a small jeweller or a nursery for plants and so on. People just are still confused what to do. Would a, just a lockdown for a time be a good idea so that unequivocally it's clear we need to just all lock down, we need to control this now? Well, you're suggesting I should close down businesses where there's no medical advice that they should. I don't understand why we would cause that harm to a business and all their workers and their livelihoods for the sake of some sort of message convenience. I, I think that would be quite reckless. What we're seeking to do is put in place measures on a scalable basis. Now, last night I gave a very clear list of those businesses that were unable to continue in their premises uh, because of the risk of the spread of coronavirus. Now, our advice is not to extend that more broadly within the retail sector. People can still go to car yards. Uh, they can still do those things where it's necessary for them to do that. 
And uh, those businesses are expected to put in place the arrangements I talked about last night, which is the four square metres per person, how many people uh, can be in that premise. And what I was trying to stress last night is the government is taking these decisions together with the states and territories very seriously. We are not going to do things to a business or someone's job and livelihood where at this stage that may and is not necessary. And so when we do make those decisions, and if we do make those decisions, you can have the confidence that it's not been done in some sort of cavalier way to just uh, suit the convenience um, of, of messaging. That's not my priority. My priority is to protect Australian lives and protect their livelihoods and to make this information as clear as I can. Kath, last question. Prime Minister, just picking up from Bill's question, um, uh, the Victorian Premier this morning in his press conference said there would be stage three lockdowns. Uh, not today, but, but they're coming. And he said uh, that it was basically understood now in the National Cabinet that there were differences between the states and his clear inference was that Victoria and New South Wales would move ahead of other states to implement stage three lockdowns. Is that your expectation? And would, uh, I think you said a minute ago, there wouldn't be resistance, but I'm just wanting to be clear. Is it your expectation that New South Wales and Victoria will move ahead of other states? Well, ultimately, the, the National Cabinet is not a compulsory mechanism. That's not how our federation is built. It's not what our constitution provides for. Um, it is, I think, the, the preference of all the national cabinet that wherever possible, they can move together and they can move together in a consistent way. But there is also an important discussion about where other states are under more extreme circumstances, uh, that measures that may be required there more urgently um, may be less urgent in other parts of the country. So there is a real discussion about how those issues can be addressed, but I can assure everyone that no measure has been restrained from in any state or territory. If any state or territory felt they needed to take those, uh, those more urgent actions, then I know they would do it through the National Cabinet, um, and, and they would not seek to do it unilaterally, but they'd seek to do it in partnership and cooperation with other states and territories. Now, on the issue of schools, I can say uh, that this morning I had a, a very positive discussion uh, with the National Education Union. Um, uh, we're working through those issues, and the points I'd make briefly about that to you is, is simply this, uh, that we recognise absolutely just how important teachers are in dealing with this crisis. When I think about teachers, I'm thinking about them in the same way that I'm thinking about paramedics, about nurses, about doctors, uh, about, frankly, those who are trying to upgrade the capabilities of, of Centrelink and things of that nature. These are critical people in our community at this time. And it's very important um, that we work with teachers to ensure that their workplace health and safety is being addressed as we manage uh, this very difficult issue. School is not as usual anymore. That's clear. We all accept that. And school won't be as usual going into the future. That's important. But we must have an orderly transition that ensures uh, that workers and, as I said last night, an essential worker is a worker with a job. Because I don't want any parent to have to choose between putting food on the table for their kids and for their kids getting an education. That is not a choice I want any parent in this country to have to make. And so we are working uh, with uh, the National Education Union. We will be having further discussions with them uh, to work through these issues. I thank them uh, for their cooperation today and the, and the very good spirit um, that they and, and many other unions around the country are working together with us. And I have no doubt, particularly working with Greg Combay and, and Nev as part of that process, they will be critical going forward as well. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.